I'm ready. What up? Let's get to it. So I'm going to speak on a couple things today. We got some TJ Hawkinson news, restructure of the contract. Harrison Phillips gets extended two years. But most importantly, I want to talk about the game plan, major keys to a Vikings victory versus those hyped up 49ers. You hear me? First off, if you watched the Jets game, you know, you saw the Jets didn't look impressive at all. And I know it's week one, game one, but overall, the Jets didn't look impressive. Even that highly spoke about defense, everyone thought it was going to be great, et cetera, et cetera. The Niners ran on them, passed on them, pretty, pretty much did what they wanted to do. So I wasn't really impressed by the Jets as a whole team. Aaron Rodgers. And Rodgers still has a nice arm, throws a nice ball, but you can tell even him in the pocket coming off that injury, he can't maneuver like he used to, right? <laughs> no way, no how, right? Coming off that Achilles injury, he's not the same mobile quarterback he used to be. Now, he's still Aaron Rodgers. He can still let it rip, sling it, et cetera, et cetera. But just watching him in the pocket, he definitely can't move the same way he used to. You know what I'm saying? That's just facts, man. Some people even say the Jets are an older team, you know, regressing team. What I saw from the Jets and what I saw from the Niners, and if I'm talking about keys to victory for the Vikings, man, it's pretty simple. You know what the Niners are going to try to do to the Vikings? It's people out there who still don't believe in the Vikings. They think Week one was a fluke. Everybody's talking about, oh, it was the Giants. It was the Giants. <laughs> I understand it was the Giants, but at the end of the day, it was a blowout win, an impressive blowout win in New York, et cetera, et cetera, dog. And you cannot take that away from the Vikings. So first thing, one of the major keys to victory, be physical. Physicality, man. Respect to the Niners. They're a physical team. They're an aggressive team. Even without Christian McCaffrey, the other running back, uh, was it Mason? Number 24, he's very impressive, was very impressive. I'm not going to cap their O-line, was very impressive, dog. So the first major key to victory is the trenches, is the trenches, man. We're talking about a real test, another test. Last week was a test for the Vikings O-line, but this week will be an even more bigger test, huh? Got to respect the Niners, give them props. They got talent all across the D-line, dog. Their trenches are impeccable. Their trenches are impeccable, huh? The way they ran the ball at will whenever they wanted to, they pretty much did whatever they wanted to do to the Jets, against the Jets. It was no force back, no pushback, right? <laughs> it was really a total domination, total domination. And they're going to try to replicate the same thing against the uh, Vikings. You hear me? I guarantee it. And if I'm sure you can guarantee it as well. <laughs> you hear me? Period. Huh? But guess what? The Vikings this year, they're a physical team, more faster team. Defense looks faster. So on both sides of the ball, the trenches, man, dominate the trenches, get pressure on the quarterback, hit Brock Purdy, put him on his neck, boy. Yeah, put that boy on his neck. He'll give you a pick. He'll give you a pick or two. We saw it last season, huh? But that's the major key, dog, maybe the most important key to victory for the Vikings. Trenches, trenches, O-line, block, you have to get the run game going. You have to get the run game going. D-line, pressure, be solid, be stout in the run game, dog. Be sturdy up front. Don't let them run all over you because they're going to come in toting that tater. They're going to come in toting that tater, dog. But I think this is a different Vikings defense, a different team in general, and I've been saying it all off season, and I'm going to stand on it, dog. And the Vikings can make a big statement, huge statement. Bottom line, whoever wins this game is the, is the best team in the NFC. <laughs> Heavy, dog, in my opinion. <laughs> whoever wins this game, they will get crowned the best team in the NFC at this moment, homie. No cap, no ifs, ands, buts about it, dog. But that's where you got to start. The trenches, offensively, get Aaron Jones going. Get him in rhythm, you know. Get him going even more earlier than you did versus the Giants. You know what I'm saying? I understand week one. You know, a little rust, maybe a little jitters, nervousness. But now it's week two, a big game, dog. Playoff atmosphere, you at home, coming back at home. You got to get that run game going more early and more often, dog. You know what I'm saying? That will only help the Vikings and that will benefit them in the play-action game, dog. So I want to see them get their run game going early, homie. 
No struggling, no getting beat up front. I understand battles will be lost, but who's going to win the war, dog? Garrett Bradbury, Ed Ingram, right now, they are the two weakest links on the O-line, but they played well last week. But shout out Blake Brandell. He played phenomenal. Darisaw is Darisaw. Brian O'Neill, Brian O'Neill. Those three played phenomenal, huh? Even Blake Brandell. I didn't think Blake Brandell had it in him, but he's one of them. He, he can play ball. Respect to him, but they got to keep it going, keep it going. Consistency, consistency. Another major test up front, physicality, who will dominate, who will win majority of the game. That's who will win the game. So offensive line, not only run blocking, but protection. We got to keep Sam Darnold upright. Got to keep Sam Darnold upright. You hear me? The bottom line, dog. You give Sam Darnold a clean pocket, you see what he can do. He'll pick a defense apart. He lets it rip. He lets it fly. Very accurate, very accurate, homie. Period. Point blank. But we got to keep him clean for the most part. And we know, you know, you'll win some, you lose some. But majority, are you winning? Are you winning the battle up front, huh? Blocking, pass blocking. I think the Vikings did a great job last week. Once again, consistency. Can you do this week in, week out? This is the NFL. That's what it's about, dog. It's not a one-game season, you hear me? It's a 17-18 game season, dog. Then playoffs, a whole new season, dog. That's what it's about. The best teams, the elite teams, Super Bowl caliber teams, they are elite week in, week out. They're or they're good week in, week out. Now you know some weeks, some weeks here or there, struggles here, struggles there is part of the game, part of the process. Mistakes happen, but majority of the time, what type of football are you playing? So O line, zone in, baby, zone in, D line, zone in. You know, Dallas Turner, get pressure. Jonathan Grenard, get pressure. We got two big boys in the middle. Jerry Tillery, Harrison Phillips played great ball last uh last last week. You know, even guys in the rotation. I uh, I think they're gonna I would like to see more of the young rookie, Taki Tamani. I would like to see him in the game more. He's a big body. I think it will be beneficial for the Vikings to insert him in the scheme. I'm sure Brian Flores will. You know, just a big bite to plug the gap, plug the holes. Another UDFA who played great, performed great in preseason, dog. So I would like to see him inserted into the package. Didn't see him a lot last week, but I want to see more of him. A big body dude. You know what I'm saying? Heavy, a real big body out there. You're gonna need you're gonna need everybody in the rotation to play well. Everybody must play well, dog. Yeah, that's just what it is. Point blank period, huh? So that's it. First. First major key trenches, man. Secondly, right? Secondly, secondary step up, defensive side. Secondary step up, man. They're gonna attack you. They're gonna they're gonna throw Debo at you. You know, they're gonna try to hit you with Kittle. They're gonna try to attack you up and down the field. Period. You know, a lot of people say the Vikings secondary is the weakest link of the defense. So it will get tried. You will get tried. So Byron Murphy, Shaquille Griffin, Gilmore. You know who's on the squad. They gotta play a lead again. They gotta play a lead again, homie. You know, competition rising, competition rising. We're going to see how they step up, dog. It's not going to be an easy test. It's going to be a dog fight, period. But we need outstanding play from the secondary, man. Safeties as well. Harrison Smith, Cam Bynum, Metellus, they all got to be zoned in. They all got to be zoned in, you know. I'm sure they're going to try to get Debo Samuels on one-on-ones. They're going to try to get Kittle on one-on-one -on -one matchups. <laughs> Linebackers, Cashman, Ivan Pace, they got to fly around. The defense is much faster, much physical, so they got to fly around. You know, put a hat on a hat, bump receivers at the line, bang them up, beat them up early, dog, wear them down. Huh? You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a dog fight. You know, who's going to continue to scratch throughout the fight, throughout the fight? Never give in, never give up, huh? That's the big course. So secondary, are they ready to perform? You know, the Niners will attack. The Niners will attack downfield. Trust that. Trust me when I say that. No cap. Offensive side of the ball receivers. We know what time it is. Uh, starts with KLC. You know, starts with KLC. Um, full four quarters again. Dialing up the plays. Putting your players in the best position. Scheming, you know, off script. You know, outshine and Shanahan. Outshine and Shanahan. Can KOC beat Shanahan? Can he figure out the, the Shanahan puzzle, dog? Can he outcoach him, outmastermind him, huh? It's going to rely a lot on coaching. KOC, Flores, their whole staff, dog, Wes Phillips, you know, Brian Flores staff, man. They're going to have to come together and really zone in and come up with a nice scheme. I feel like you might see the best from Flores this week, one of his best coach games. 
You know, I think he's going to keep it going and keep it going, period. But it's going to be imperative. KOC coaches calls a good game, dog. Mixes it up. You know, gives them new looks. Doesn't get predictable, homie. But he has to get that run game going. He cannot abandon the run game. You hear me? You know, but he, he's the head coach, the play caller. He has to zone in mentally. He has to go somewhere and be zoned in, dog. Period, bottom line, point blank. KLC, Brian Flores, the coaching staff, they got to bring their A game as well. I'm sure the Niners will, homie. You know, who can make the adjustments? Who can out coach who? Who can trick who? Confuse who? Catch them off guard. <laughs> That's football, right? Not rocket science, but football, huh? You know what it is. So those are the major keys. Simple, dog. Simple, dog. You know, one on one matchups. Uh, I would like to see the pass rush, the Vikings pass rush. Versus the Niners tackles. You got Trent Williams over there. Big boy, Trent Williams, Hall of Famer. Still doing it, man. 37, 38, still playing at a high level. Still a pro bowler, homie. I'm very excited to see the pass rush of the Vikings uh, uh, going against them. A lot of matchups, a lot of close matchups. You got to pay attention to, dog, period. But those are the major keys of the game. The, 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 the most important factor is going to be who wins in the trenches and everything else will fall into place, period. That's what it is, man. And I'm sure, you know, fans, us Vikings fans, we pretty much know that. It's time for the Vikings to prove it. Are they a physical team? Are they a real team? Are they the real deal? We will see Sunday, though. But those are, in my opinion, the major keys to victory. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Big skull here, man. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell. Make sure you hit that bell. And we got more Vikings news. Want to get into some TJ Hawkinson news real quick. So Hawkinson looked like he will be back. Week seven, week seven is not bad. You know, week seven is not bad. But they also restructured Hawkinson. And shout out Hawk for the restructure too. Reports Vikings restructure TJ Hawkinson's contract to free up cap space. Hawkinson previously had 14 million cap hit in 24. See what it's about. The Vikings have restructured the contract of tight end TJ Hawkinson to free up cap space, according to Dan Mozatani of the Pioneer Press. Prior to this move, the Vikings were dead last in the NFL in salary cap space with just around 900000 according to Over the Cap. They can save around $7.1 million with the maximum restructure of Hawkinson's deal per OTC. That's what's up. This isn't a pay cut of any sort for Hawkinson. It's just one of those standard restructures that kicks money down the line to reduce a player's immediate cap hit. In Hawkinson's case, that means his 14 million cap number for 24 will go down. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Two. I appreciate it. All right. In Hawkinson's case, that means his 14 million cap number for 24 will go down. Respect, Hawk. Shout out, Hawk. And this is something, I mean, something Hawkinson should should have been willing to do. I mean, you got an MCL, ACL injury. You don't know if he'll be the same player. You, you're missing seven. You're missing. You'll be out to week seven. So he, he definitely affecting the, off, the Vikings offense, him not being available. But shout out to Hawkinson for, you know, just, just proving that he, he, he can play fair ball. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Hawk. But he won't be losing or even deferring any of money he was already set to receive. So it's not even really no big deal. It's just, I guess, a restructure, creating more space because, like I just said, he's not losing money or deferring any of money he was already set to receive. So a restructure, I know it's kind of like confusing because he's not losing money, but you say restructure. But like they say, you push more money down through the years to free up some space. So I get it. Smart move by Quasi. Freeing up some cap space gives the Vikings more flexibility to make moves during the season if they want to. Any unused cap space can then be rolled over into the next year. Smart move. Hawkinson 27 is under contract to the through the 2027 season with the void year on his deal in 2028. The two-time Pro Bowler had a career high 960 receiving yards last season before suffering a torn ACL and MCL in week 16. 
He's on the res- reserve PUP list to begin this season as he, as he finishes recovering from January surgery on his knee. Hawkinson will be eligible to return in week five, but it may make more sense to hold him out until after the Vikings week six bye. Yeah, it probably will make more sense, you know, probably make more sense. Keep it, keep him healthy. You know what I'm saying? Let's go back here one second. So it says right here, speaking of that, keep him healthy. It says week seven, he might be back. So we say week seven. Week seven and play for TJ Hawkinson's return. That's what's up. The Vikings are hoping to have Pro Bowl tight end TJ Hawkinson back before the midseason point. Well, not too much in the way of a timetable has emerged regarding the high price pass catcher. ESPN's Jeremy Fowler points to week seven as a potential activation point. And that'll be perfect timing if you ask me. You know, the offense, you really see the identity of the Vikings and bringing in another weapon like Hawkinson makes the offense that more spooky, that more scarier, gives KOC another weapon to insert into the scheme. And, you, and you're going to see the, the offense excel, I'm sure. No cap, man. Hawkinson started the season on a physical, unable to perform this after tearing his ACL MCL. We know that already. The 22 trade acquisition eligible to be activated from the PUP list after four weeks, but his ongoing rehab may keep him sidelined for a few extra weeks, which is okay, especially if the offense considers to roll the way it has rolled. Shout out KLC, shout out Sam Darnold, the whole offense, baby. Considering Minnesota's bye comes in week six, it makes for a natural on ramp ahead of a potential debut. Despite missing the last two games of 23 season, Hawkinson recorded career high marks in reception 95 and receiving yards 960 in his first full season with the Vikings. The former top 10 arrived in Minnesota from Detroit in 22. That line Dale and smoothly and smoothly assimilated into Kevin O'Connell's offense. So we pretty much know what's up, man. You know, like this is we, we, we know what's going on. So great news. He returns week seven. Hopefully the offense is on a roll and is continuing the ball. And once he comes back, the offense is just going to continue to elevate. Huh? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> the offense is going to, the offense is going to continue to elevate. And, and, and that's great news, man. So shout out Hawkinson. Shout out the Vikings for getting a restructure done. And with that seven mil, they can operate during the season if they need to, as far as signing a player, making trades, making certain maneuvers. So that's always a plus, dog. Respect. Shout out to the Vikings. Now, there's some more news I want to chat, want to tap into. I heard Harrison Phillips got an extension. You know, last season, if we're talking about last season, I would have said, hey, Harrison Phillips get an extension two years. I don't know. <laughs> I need more from him. I need more from him. But now, but now I like the extension, man. For what I've seen, from what I've seen from the Giants, the Giants game week one, I like the way Harrison Phillips was playing. He looked good. He looked fast. He 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 looked he looked look like a better player, duh. Vikings. Harrison Phillips agreed to a contract extension. Phillips' extension will keep him under contract with Minnesota through twenty six. And let's see, man. Roster constructions continue to develop as the Minnesota Vikings eye long-term success and a piece of the puzzle for at least the next two seasons is defensive tackle Harrison Phillips, who has reportedly agreed to a contract extension. And if we're talking about pieces to the puzzle, Harrison Phillips is definitely that. Coming off the, the performance he had last week, obviously Brian Flores likes him, loves him in his scheme. He looks a little, He looked a little more quicker to me. Let me know if you agree. But I like this extension last year. I would have said, hey, I don't know. But what I seen week one, he can keep it up. He's a player. He's a dog out there, dog. According to NFL Network's Tom Pellicero, Phillips and the Vikings are in agreement on a two-year extension worth up to 19 mil with more than 13 mil guaranteed. The extension means Phillips is under contract with the Vikings through 26. So your D tackle, your nose tackle, some say he's out of playing out of position. But in this Flores scheme, as we saw last Sunday, Man, I don't care if you're in position, out of position. Flores can just make players just play good. Huh? You know, Flores can create schemes, put players in certain positions where they reach their maximum potential. And we see it with Phillips, dog. Out of position or in position, he plays solid for the Vikes. Phillips had one of the Minnesota Vikings five sacks on Daniel Jones in Sunday's 28-6 victory over the Giants. Overall, 
He wound up being the fourth highest graded Vikings defender in the game, receiving a score of 80.3 in the victory. That's what it is, man. Now we got to keep it going. He got to keep playing ball. We're going to see he will be tested just like the whole D line this week versus the Niners. So, you know, Niners, Texans, Packers, it, the, the schedule gets tough. The schedule gets tough. So we're going to see if he's worth that 19 mil. We're going to see if he's worth that 19 mil, dog. No cap. But that's it, man. <laughs> you know, major keys to victory. Uh, we got Hawkinson restructure contract, Harrison Phillips extension. All good, man. <laughs> you know, got more videos coming. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe once again. Big school here. Shout out my big dogs, my subscribers, my supporters. You are much appreciated for life. Never get it. You hear me? <laughs> school Vikes, man. Got them hyped up 49ers this week. Let's handle business, huh? <sighs> yeah. School Vikes, one loser draw. Let's get it.